Good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday, June 14th, and I'm here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I want to teach you how you can set more cucumbers and harvest more cucumbers than you ever thought you could. I have been growing cucumbers for many years, and if you're like me, I have always had a problem with cucumber fruit set. A lot of little tiny baby cucumbers would form all over my vines, but eventually those cucumbers would dry up, turn yellow, and drop to the ground, and they would not turn into a mature fruit. And that happens for a very specific scientific reason. Cucumbers belong to a family of plants called cucurbits, and that family of plants includes, of course, cucumbers, but among other things, squashes like zucchini, butternut squash, pumpkins, uh, spaghetti squash, gourds, uh, it also includes melons like cantaloupe and watermelon to name a few. When it comes to the cucurbit family of plants, most cucurbits are monoecious plants. And what that means is while they are self-fertile, the individual flowers are not. And while something like a tomato or a pepper flower is self-fertile within itself, it just needs to be uh, pollinated by the wind. For cucurbits, they set individual male and female flowers. And I'm going to take you over to my watermelon plant so I can show you what cucurbit flowers look like. And here is one of my watermelon vines. Here you can see a male flower of a watermelon. And that male flower is just a nice looking, pretty flower. And the purpose of this flower is to provide pollen to fertilize the female flower. And here you can see what a female flower looks like. The female flower has a little tiny baby watermelon attached to it, and this holds true for all of the cucurbits. The female flower for the cucumber has a little baby cucumber attached, and for zucchini it has a little baby zucchini attached, etc. So in order for cucurbit family fruit set to occur, a pollinator has to fly from the male flower to the female flower and distribute the male pollen into the female flower. And then if that female flower is pollinated, that little baby fruit will grow into a mature fruit. If that does not happen, this will happen right here. This is a baby watermelon that did not get pollinated, so it has aborted. So this is going to dry up and fall off. And you'll see that all over your zucchini plants, your squashes, your cucumbers. If they do not get pollinated effectively by an external pollinator, then that fruit is going to dry up and it's going to fall off. So if you've ever seen little baby cucumbers lying underneath your plant, that's because of lack of proper pollination. With typical monoecious cucurbits, because we rely on pollinators to set our fruit, it can be a very unreliable process. And to make things trickier, the male flowers outnumber the female flowers something like nine to one. 80 to 90% of the flowers on your plants are going to be male. And because your plants put in so much energy to make male flowers, they only have a limited amount of energy left to produce female flowers. So when we do not get fruit set on those female flowers, it really hits hard and we lose a lot of our potential crop. You can do things like take a blush brush and hand pollinate to try and maximize your fruit set, but you still have that problem with male flowers outnumbering female flowers dramatically, and it does take quite a bit of time to go ahead and do that. But there is an alternative to growing typical monoecious varieties of cucumbers. There are varieties of cucumbers called genetious cucumbers, and genetious cucumbers contain all female flowers. When you grow genetious varieties of cucumbers, 100% of the flowers on that plant are going to be female flowers. So they're all going to have little baby cucumbers attached to them. Now, in order to have pollination, when you grow genetious cucumbers, you also have to interplant monoecious cucumbers with them as well. So there will be male flowers mixed in there and you will have to rely on cross-pollination of varieties. Oh, hey, Dale. Thank you for joining me. Say hi to the camera, Dale. So if you choose to grow a Ganesius cucumber, you're going to have to grow at least two varieties of cucumbers and interplant them so you will have male flowers in the mix. And you will have to rely on cross-pollination for those female flowers to set fruit. So you are still going to have to rely on pollinators. Well, there's actually a way around this entire thing. There are parthenocarpic versions of Ganesius cucumbers. 
Parthenocarpic plants do not require pollination to set fruit. So when you grow a Parthenocarpic cucumber like this one right here, 100% of the flowers on the plant will be female and they will not need to be pollinated by an external male flower. They will set fruit on their own. And because of that, these are the most productive cucumbers I have ever seen in my entire life. This variety of cucumber right here is called Bait Alpha or Bite Alpha. They're an Israeli bred cucumber, so I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation and I apologize for that. But these are an awesome, awesome, awesome type of cucumber with off the charts production. And here are my plants right here. Look at the production on this. It's just crazy. One, two, three, four, five. I have one hanging up here. I have little babies that are forming everywhere. I have never seen cucumbers that produce to the level that these do. And that's because when it comes to growing cucumbers, the hardest thing about growing them is ensuring proper pollination. And because these fruits set without pollination, you do not have to worry about having pollinators in your garden and you do not have to hand pollinate. These female flowers are going to set fruit for you at an alarmingly high rate. And off of these two plants right here, I have harvested over two dozen cucumbers. They are fantastic, they are super crisp, and they are super crunchy. They're some of the best tasting cucumbers that I have ever tasted. So let me give you a little bit of a close up on the wonderful yields of these cucumbers. They're just everywhere, and I just picked this plant clean two days ago. So all of these cucumbers formed and grew over two days. And you can see more hanging in here and they are forming all the way up the trellis. And by the way, you can see uh, how I have them trellised over string. Uh, maybe you find that interesting. If you do find it interesting how I trellis this, I will link to a video above as to how I built this trellis and how I use this method to string trellis. I also use them on tomatoes and it's been extremely successful for me. And uh, like I said, I'll link to that video above. These cucumbers right here were actually developed for commercial production to be grown in greenhouses. Because greenhouses are enclosed space, and some of them are even negative pressure to keep out bacteria and fungi and diseases, well, in those environments, you don't have pollination, so the people have to go around and hand pollinate traditionally. Because these set fruit on their own without pollination, these will produce indefinitely in greenhouses until the vines eventually get tired and they quit. So this is a great way that you can have a very, very low maintenance uh, harvest of incredibly productive cucumbers. Now, one thing that you really have to understand when you grow a Parthenocarpic cucumber is that if you choose to grow a Parthenocarpic cucumber, you have to grow it in isolation. This is the only variety that I can grow in my garden. And the reason why is, if this variety is cross-pollinated by another variety, these wonderful, crispy, delicious fruits are going to shrivel and they're going to become deformed and they're going to become very bitter. You're not going to want to eat these. So if you decide to grow a Parthenocarpic variety, it has to be grown in isolation. And I'm not quite sure what the spacing required is. If you want to grow multiple varieties of cucumbers in your garden, if you have a very large garden outdoor, you might be able to separate them by a few hundred feet. But in my garden, because it's, uh, it's fairly small, this is the only variety I'm growing this year because I can't risk pollination or it will ruin my crop. Now, as I mentioned before, this Parthenocarpic variety of cucumber is called Bite Alpha. However, there are several other Parthenocarpic varieties to pick from. So if you look around and you do a search, maybe you don't want to try this variety, maybe you want to try another one. This is the only Parthenocarpic variety that I've tried. However, I will say I live in a very hot, humid climate and we have just been getting tons of rain recently and I don't have any issues so far uh, with disease knocking out this plant. This is uh, somewhat resistant to powdery mildew, which is an issue that we have in my climate, but it has taken the torrential rains like a champ, and it has been raining every day for three or four days now, 
and it's not showing any sign of disease. It's certainly not quitting fruit production. So I think this is a very vigorous variety. It is also delicious. It's very crisp and it has a very small seed cavity. This was developed in Israel, so I would expect it to be pretty heat tolerant, and I have nothing but great things to say about this cucumber. In fact, I have only had one problem all year by deciding to grow this cucumber. When I start my seedlings, I always make sure to at least grow two plants to hedge my bets in case a storm or a rabbit or something comes along and kills one of my plants. I always like having a backup. The problem I've had with this plant is because I have two, they are so vigorous and so productive, I have no idea what I'm doing with all of these cucumbers. I've been handing them out to family. I've been handing them out to neighbors. I just, I don't know what to do with them all. I have an entire fridge drawer just full of cucumbers, and I've never had that problem before. Usually I have to cross my fingers and hope that I have good fruit set and I can go out and I can pick a cucumber for salad for dinner. But with this variety, it is a non-issue. Here I have two additional bait alpha cucumbers that I started that are about six to eight weeks behind my other ones. I like to succession plant my crops here in North Carolina because of our disease and pest issues. So I always like to have some fresh plants. So at some point I will rip out those other plants and these will become my production plants. No matter where you live, I always recommend having succession crops unless you live in a very, very short season climate. It's a really smart way to ensure that you're always going to have good fruit production. But before I leave you, I want to give you one more tip on how you can have incredibly productive cucumbers. And this holds true for virtually every fruiting vegetable that you will grow. When it comes to the lifespan of any plant, it is always that plant's number one goal to go to seed and reproduce. The fruit that we eat is actually just a side benefit to the life cycle of the plant. The reason why these plants produce fruit is because they want to seed the ground and they want to grow offspring. I have heard lots of stories of people that get one cucumber on their plant and then they turn yellow and then the plant quits on them. And the reason why that happens is because you let the cucumber plant go to seed. When it comes to cucumbers, the more you pick them, the more cucumbers you will get. If you let your cucumbers go to maturity, where they will turn very large and start to get yellow, your plant is then given a hormonal signal that it has fruited, it has made mature seed, it has seeded the ground, and now it is time to die. If you want to have the most production possible with a cucumber plant, make sure that you are in there constantly picking the cucumbers when they are young and immature. If you keep your plants thinking that they have not produced mature seed and they have not seeded the ground for their offspring, they are going to do everything possible to pump out more cucumbers for you in order to seed the earth. And that is how you have incredible cucumber production. And that right there is just another day's harvest from the bait alpha cucumber. Using a little bit of science and growing these parthenocarpic all-female Ganesius cucumbers and making sure to pick them often, you can have the most incredible yields of your life. Everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.